Welcome back fashionistas. I am so happy that we have time again. So I want you to come on in on behalf of the Canine Chronicle on their website and on their Facebook page for another episode of Closet Confidential, the cornerstones of fashion. Come on in, come on in, the vault is open. I'm Elaine Lessig and in case you haven't been here before, welcome to the vault. Everybody, come on in. It's time for another bunch of fun, fun, fun. I've missed you, missed you, missed you. Come on in. Every building is built with a cornerstone. And what the architects did in ancient times even, is they put a stone in the corner, and another stone in the corner, and another stone in the corner, and another stone in the corner, and that is how they built their foundation. Ladies, fashion is no different. We all have a foundation. Our feet are the foundation upon which we stand. And so the principles, if there were four cornerstones, and I'm sorry I didn't have four yoga blocks to show it to you with, but we'll, and who else would have pink cornerstones? I mean, really? But that's how we are in the vault, isn't it? In any event, so we have four cornerstones of fashion. And they, it, it, it applies to all fashion. It applies whether you're getting dressed to go camping. It applies whether you're dressed to go to a ball. It, it applies if you're dressed just to go to a wonderful dog show when we have the opportunity to do it. So let me explain. It's first one would be the cut. The cut of your clothing, how it fits, its shape as compared to yours. Another one would be color. Every piece of clothing has color. And how you use the color is probably one of the most fascinating things you can do. And the next one is your creativity. How do you take these things and put them together? And the final one is what makes a huge difference, and I call it class. You can have the most beautiful outfit on the world on, but if you make it look trashy, ladies, that's your fault. So here we go. Are you ready? Cut. What does cut mean? Okay, I have a couple of outfits here. And I'm just going to show them to you and give you an idea on what I mean by the four different parts of this. Okay, cut. Okay, so I'm on the smaller side, but you may not be. And you may decide that what you need to do is create a waist. So you would buy a top like this. As you can see, it's a little longer in the back, so it's going to cover a few things you may not want people to see. And notice where the pockets are and how they, they take a shape. And so when you put this on, with the little buttons in the back, it creates a waistline. And then the softness of it and the lack of the fact that it's fitted tightly anyplace else will cover you from here to here. And therefore, it provides a waist. And if you're one of these people that needs to, to have a waist put in where you don't have the best waist in the world, and, you know, we all have problem areas, you might want to look for a cut like this on a jacket that you buy. And I'm showing you this because it's a cute little way. You could wear anything underneath it and just shape yourself out by using a little piece like this vest and I think it's a wonderful way lovely colors pick up a nice brown or tan with it and you've got it made that's your color combination add it to something simple underneath that will not take away and give you any bulk and finally it's kind of classy isn't it another idea for you and this is another really if you can look at this you can see, it's a more loosely fitted jacket. Gives you a straight slimming line from here to here. Straight line down the front, which is also very slimming. By the way, ladies, guess what I've heard from all the fashionistas in the, in the greater fashion world? Animal prints for this fall are in. So you may want to find yourself an animal print, but not something that's gaudy. Remember, class counts. So you don't want to do that. So find something like this. This is a very simple jacket. It's trimmed to match the dress, and I did not buy them together. And then if you prefer, you can always open it up. And there it is. Now the dress underneath, it has a shape. And notice the colors between the jacket and the dress. They're complementary. It's a good combination. I use some creativity here. And here's the cut of the dress. Now the dress, as you can see, it has a built-in waist with darts and the, so it's going to shape you in. 
which is great because then you put the jacket on top and you don't have bulk of fabric underneath. And I certainly think this is a very classy outfit. The zippers in the front have certain advantages, I think. And you know, you can come to your own conclusion about that as I struggle here to zip it up. But um, I do find that the zippers are neater sometimes than buttons pulling over your front. Nobody wants to see the buttons in your front that are pulling and saying, oh my God, that's too tight. So a jacket like this takes care of all those different and unique situations that you will have that somebody else won't have. So let's continue for a second. This is another way. Okay, cut. It's a flary little jacket. It's gonna cover that little area right here if you don't want it to be seen. Again, the jacket's a little longer in the back than it is in the front. It's got two little asymmetric snaps and I've paired it with a really sweet, lighter colored yellow skirt. It's simple, it's very modern, it takes up a different kind of a cut. We've kept our color and our combination going. And even though it's a wild print, it is classy. And it's something easy to wear. By the way, all these clothes that I'm showing you, in case you haven't noticed, are very easy care materials that aren't gonna wrinkle when you travel. And since we all travel in the world of dogs, we don't want to take extra time staying in an ironing board, even if we have access to it. I would say, especially if we have access to it, I don't want to stand in front of an ironing board. So lots of these clothes are easy care, lightweight, but yet they're in different situations, they could keep you warm or keep you cool. And again, it's the cut, color, combinations with or your creativity, and it's class. Now I've got one that may surprise you a little bit. You're going to say, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okay. This dress is about as colorful as you're going to find. It has a beautiful waist on it. It's darted all the way down. It's very much meant to shape to your body. But since we all don't have perfect bodies, we find things to put over them. In a million years, would you have put this combination, notice the borders on the jacket with the floral pattern and the beautiful buttons, guess what it does? It makes an absolutely amazing combination with the colors of the, of the actual dress, the colors of the jacket. It's fun, it's flirty. Again, comfortable fabrics that don't wrinkle. And you've got cut, color, creativity, and class. So you hear a bunch of all kinds of ideas, seasonal, not seasonal, anything you can think to put up for yourself is really great. Putting outfits together is what makes fashion. Anybody can buy a black dress, put it on and ruin it by doing the wrong things with it. So here's some great ideas. And I have to say, when I was out at Bloomsburg, um, I saw so many of you and you had some great clothes on girls. Well done. Now let me get to a couple of other things that I wanted to talk to you about. And this comes in a question from Jackie. And Jackie uh, saw me at, in Bloomsburg and she wanted to know, were these my real lashes and my real eyebrows? For you younger members of our outstanding and loyal audience whom I love, um, yes, these are mine and these are my eyebrows, they're my eyelashes, but I have to say, as women get older and life changes for them hormonally, you do lose your eyelashes and your eyebrows. It's just a part of aging. So I wasn't happy with it, as I'm sure you wouldn't be happy with it. And if you were from my friends of the younger generation, I'm sure you might want better eyebrows and or longer lashes. So I investigated. I like things that are sort of natural. I don't like to put chemicals um, on my face or near my eyes. I don't think chemicals near your eyes are safe. And I'm just one of those people who likes to keep her skin in good condition. And so I wanted to look for a more natural product that would work. And in studying that, I found something I really liked and I tried it. And lo and behold, it really works. So I'm gonna show you real tight on the camera now the product and explain to you why it's good. The product is called Essie, E-S-S-Y. 
I bought it on Amazon. It averages somewhere around $28 um, for each one of the containers that has the um, actual product in it. And it often, you know, in Amazon you can get a coupon at checkout. So when I wanted two of them because I wanted one that I could travel with and one to leave at home, I discovered that if I bought them individually, they still were over the $25, you know, Amazon free shipping. And so I did that and I got $2 off of each. So fashionistas, we can also be bargain hunters. So if you want to take a look at these, um, they'll be posted up on our website. Amy Gravy is always wonderful about giving you how to contact contact information for any of the products that we show you and you will find it there. I've been using it now probably for about a year and um, I'm going to let the, the camera get in real close and you can see my eyebrows and my lashes and you can see it's really 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 worked. And these are my eyelashes and my eyebrows. And periodically, I will just take a little bit of an eyeshadow and just fill in a little bit with an eyeshadow brush just to give it a more uniform sort of a look. And they're all mine, girls. And you and the older ladies can have these too. And the product is Essie, and I found it on Amazon. Another question that I got was, how do you know <clears throat> when you're looking at a piece of costume jewelry whether you're buying it online, or you see it in a, in a vintage store, or anything like that, how can you know if it really is a signed piece? Signed pieces of any kind of jewelry um, will always have more value. If you get something from Tiffany's, take a look. You will see Tiffany's always has, you know, its, it's mark on it. And so people know that's a piece of Tiffany's. It might be worth more. Or if you were getting something that would be vintage, you would be looking for the marks of the, of the people who were making those pieces of jewelry at that moment in time. So if you come in for a second, we'll take you in on a really close look and, and we'll zoom in and let you see that there are hallmarks on this jewelry. And the hallmarks are right on the tips, right near the, cl the clasp on the one. and that will be right here and then on the clasp on the other piece of it which is an extension and I got this question from Susan who was looking for a beautiful piece of crystal or, or rhinestone however you choose to do it, a vintage piece because she's going to be going to a very special occasion and is going to be very dressed up and she wanted a beautiful necklace so I took out one that I had just to show you can find the actual um, designer of those pieces of jewelry and it does increase the value so it's something you might want to think about when you are going out and trying to find vintage pieces and you are buying them online and not seeing them in person and then you check when you get the piece and make sure it is exactly what was said and then you can look up the designer and find out if they are really somebody of note that would be a reason for the value on a piece of costume jewelry being that high. Thank you, Susie, and thank you, Jackie, for those two questions. And now I have a very, very enjoyable question to share with you. I was contacted by a mom of a junior, and the junior's name is Savannah. And Savannah is going to be going to her first show to show as a junior. And Savannah has a Welsh Terrier, and her mom wanted some fashion suggestions from me. So instead of talking to mom, I said to mom, why don't you have Savannah call me? I'd love to talk to her. And Savannah and I had a lovely chat. And the first thing I asked her was, what do you think you should wear, Savannah? And she talked to me about a frilly party dress. And I explained to her that showing a dog is a bit like having a job. And your job is to present your dog and to present your dog well. And we're not going to a party, we're going to a dog show. And I explained to her to look at the colors in her dog's coat and find something that complemented this. And I suggested something with her dog, perhaps like a lovely tan and red outfit, or perhaps something with a little more fall color to it, maybe a, maybe a green. And I didn't think it was appropriate for such a young person like you, Savannah, to wear grays or blacks or anything like that. And I reminded her also, keep the clothing close to your body. You don't want something out here or down to here because that's going to get in your dog's face. 
And another thing I reminded her, which I always remind you guys, is good bottoms on your shoes if you're going to be running around. And it was lovely to talk to her, and I can't wait to find out how she does when she goes to her first show. And she shows her Welsh Terrier. You go, Savannah. All the fashionistas here are right behind you. Now, another thing I'd like to discuss with you is some of the things I learned myself from wearing a mask for 14 hours a day. I discovered that one mask isn't enough, that you need to be able to change the mask out. I had on cotton masks, and my masks are child size. And what I found was that the cotton mask began to droop as it got more moist. And remember I told you about being careful about your skin? I had been very careful. I only wore eye makeup, and my skin was well conditioned with what I usually put on every day. But I found that as I moved, and as I kept saying to people down the back, please go around. I was using my voice a lot, which of course sent a lot of vapors into the inside of the mask. And so the mask would kind of keep drooping down on me. And so I know now I need to change them more frequently. The other thing I learned is the ears, that the um, elastic that goes behind your ears after 14 hours. I had a headache, and I don't mean that in some of the times the way we say I had a headache, or I have a headache. But I mean it to say it really got onto the bones behind my ears and irritated me and of course my skin went as well. So I've now changed and gotten a more softer um, pieces behind some of the masks that I got and I've also decided that for me since I have a little face I would be more comfortable having it tight, you know, latch in the back and I'm going to try those the next time. The other thing I learned about the masks is that when you do have four of them to change Make sure you have something with you that you can put that mask in when you go to put it away or change it because that mask has all the things in it that we don't want to share. So make sure we're back to the good old sandwich bags. Make sure you have some extra Ziploc bags around and change that bag, change that face mask when you're actually at your setup or in your car or at your motor home or back in your room and put it directly into that plastic bag and make sure it's tight until you have a chance to wash it if it's a reusable one. If it's one that you are going to be throwing away, please have a little common sense and remember, wherever you throw it, somebody else may be throwing something in there just behind you. So again, think about it. It makes much more sense and it's much more useful for you to put it in that bag, zip it up, and close it. Okay, fashionistas, I've got to ask the big question. Are you ready for fall? I can't believe we've come through August this far and fall is around the corner. We're having our first cool day in this part of the world, which is western New Jersey. But again, I think it's time to think about changing from your summer mode and your lightweight cottons and the things that are a little looser fitting and the things that you are wearing because it's hot. And remember, we're going to be going into cooler weather, whether it's we're going into more air conditioned environments or that we're going to be outside. And so the time is to go look in that closet, take a look in the closet and see, okay, do I have enough, do I have enough fall things? You know, do I have a, a tweed jacket? Oh, and look, it's a shaped waist. You might like this one especially. Do I have a fall jacket? Do I have some things to wear it with? Do I need a pair of boots? Do I want to get a new pair of brown shoes? Go and look, make lists. Remember, the smartest way to shop fashionistas is with a list. Whether that list is something you put in your phone, you take a list in your pocket, you send yourself a reminder, but be thinking about fall at this point in time and be consciously thinking of what do I have, what do I want, and that equals what I need. So if you take what I have, what I need and make it what you want because there's no sense in wasting your money because you're going to want to see something else and buy that too. A great fall color if you love orange goes with so many things and I think orange is happy. So just things to think about and notice this could be a really good weekend of putting things together. A brown and a tan skirt and you've got yourself a whole bunch of outfits and then get a third jacket and you've got five easy pieces. So there you go. Those are the things I want you to think about as you head toward fall. The other things you need to think about as you head toward fall is changing some of the colors in your makeup. 
um, those pink lipsticks you were wearing all summer, find a new lipstick that you like. Find another um, color of any of the powders you might be using. Bronze yourself up a little bit more. There's so many things we could do. Fashion encompasses everything. And because fashion encompasses everything, ladies, may I introduce my chandelier. I think it makes the vault complete. We all need a little light to shine on all the treasures in here, and here they are. So, fashionistas, until the next time we see each other, which I don't think is going to be very long, this is Elaine Lessig on behalf of the Canine Chronicle, their webpage and their Facebook page, saying I love each and every one of you. I want you to come back as often as you can. Don't forget you could be working on creating your own vault. There's no reason there couldn't be a chandelier in your life. Okay, fashionistas, it's time to close the vault. Love to all of you. Bye. And we always like to remind members of our audience, both those who watch us on video or on Canine Chronicle TV, you too can ask a question. We love hearing from you. All you have to do is send your questions to Amy Gravy. The information is on the website and on the Facebook page, right under the Closet Confidential shows that you get to see. Please, we had some great questions this week. We'd like to get some more. Take a look, ask a question, send us your name, and we will be glad to answer it.